Welcome to this week's message from the Norwich Alliance Church. This is Pastor Chuck Tyree. Uh, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you are as well. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, sometimes we feel so broken, uh, especially this year during all the stress of the pandemic and uh, economic stress and, and uh, concern over loved ones. Uh, we have had a year when many people are very much struggling. Help us to understand that being broken or feeling broken uh, isn't necessarily uh, the end of us. It's, it's not a hopeless situation. As a matter of fact, uh, you can take our brokenness and reshape our lives into something very beautiful and useful and glorious, something that, that brings you glory and, and brings us a great deal of satisfaction. So I pray today as we consider uh, this illustration of the potter and the clay from Jeremiah chapters 18 through 20, that you would give us hope today, Father, and, and an idea of how to respond to our own brokenness. I, I ask this blessing in the name of Christ our Savior, amen. Well, a few years ago uh, at Dorch Alliance Church, we invited uh, one of our neighbors from Colchester, Connecticut, who's also a professor at Nyack College, named Mike Ferris, uh, to come and do an illustration in a Sunday service for us. And his ministry is called A Journey to the Potter's House. He uh, uses this illustration from Jeremiah and other places in the Old Testament to point out to us um, our relationship to our loving, creative God and, and how God has a sovereign right to shape our lives and reshape them if necessary. Uh, he did a masterful job. This is a picture of him uh, crafting a beautiful piece of ceramic pottery uh, with a tool. And he's very carefully making a cut into the clay uh, with the tool. That removes uh, some of the clay, but it also makes this pot more beautiful, more aesthetically pleasing, and more useful to the person who owns it. So we're going to look into our own lives and, and see God as the heavenly potter and ourselves as uh, the clay in his hands. As we uh, do this, I want you to, with me, uh, come to the idea that uh, God has a right to shape your life. Uh, this is the theme of Jeremiah's prophecy at this point, that God is a sovereign God. Now, the word sovereign means having an absolute supreme authority over a subject, a person, a kingdom, uh, and the universe. And God is, is sovereign over everything. He created it all in us as well. And so he has the sovereign right to shape our lives. That's the first thing that uh, we're going to have to confess if we're going to see God's plan for us uh, really produce the kind of useful, beautiful life that he intended for us. So the first thing that Jeremiah was saying to these rebellious people uh, in his time in, in Judah is that God has the right to make us or break us. In verse 6, God is speaking, and he said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. Uh, this is a message from the Old and New Testament uh, to all of creation. It's God's, he can shape planets, he can shape continents, uh, he can change the direction of a river if he decides to. Uh, God can wash away part of the outer banks in, in uh, the Carolinas uh, with a huge hurricane if he decides to reshape, reform that part of the world. Well, God also has the right uh, to reshape our nation and also our individual lives, our families, our communities. Uh, if we don't know this, uh, we might resist God's shaping influence. If you noticed in that uh, first illustration, you could see the hand of the potter, you could see the place where his uh, fingers gently applied pressure to make the beautiful shape of uh, the pot that he was making. The potter has taken something very common and uh, clay, uh, just a mixture of clay and water, uh, something that 
is is not particularly valuable and he is making it into something that's very beautiful uh, recently they discovered a ceramic bowl uh, from the ming dynasty that was sold in in uh, connecticut at a yard sale and uh, i think it sold in auction for thirty three thousand dollars so uh, a potter uh, in the ming dynasty took a piece of clay out of the ground that was essentially uh, nearly worthless and now uh, after this yard sale find uh, the person set some record uh, selling it for $33,000. The potter has an absolute right to make whatever he desires out of this clay. He can make those little uh, chia pets if he wants to, or uh, he can make a Ming bowl. Uh, that's the choice of the potter. The, the person who gets the clay and combines it with the water and puts it on his potting wheel uh, gets to decide what the clay will become. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Isaiah asked, you shall not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? Well, Isaiah is pointing out the false idea that we are self-determining, that we were uh, created to just decide whatever we want to be in our own and imagine and in our own head and then just become it. Uh, that's not true, not even a little. God made you, and he made you for a beautiful, wonderful purpose. He's loving, he's creative, he's all-knowing, and he created you to love you. And he has a wonderful purpose for your life, something glorifying and amazing that God would like to make of you. The problem comes when we are fundamentally confused. We're confused about who we are and what we are and our purpose in the world. Uh, if we think that our purpose is just to have fun or uh, to do our own thing or be self-determining, uh, that's absolutely wrong. And those are hard places in the clay that will not be shaped by the potter's hand. When God's good creation goes bad, he has a right to remake us. That's uh, this message of sovereignty God is giving to his rebellious people through his prophet Jeremiah uh, verse 4 said, and, and what it, whenever the clay would not take the shape he wanted, he wanted, he would change his mind and form it into some other shape. So uh, Mike, when he was doing his demonstration, showed us that uh, if there's a hard place in the clay that refuses the potter's hand, he has to dig his finger into the clay and pull out that stone or that hardened piece of clay and throw it away. He has to remove that, and then he has to pound the clay back down into a lump uh, on the wheel and start over again to reshape it into something beautiful and useful. God has a plan for you and me, but if there are these hard places of resistance in us, a rebellion or ideas that won't submit to the authority, the loving, sovereign authority of God in us, uh, those things have to be removed or our life will never take the shape it's intended to take. The illustration of the potter is valid for people, it's valid for cities, it's valid, valid for countries, every country, including ours. And so God said in verses 6 through 8, People of Israel, the Lord has power over you, just as a potter has power over clay. If I threaten to uproot and shatter an evil nation, and that nation turns from its evil, I will change my mind. I will promise to make a nation strong, but its people, if they start disobeying me and doing evil, then I will change my mind and not help them at all. We need to hear this message of God, our loving, sovereign potter who created us. Our responsibility and opportunity is to repent, to allow God to remove those hardened places in us, uh, so that he can shape us into something beautiful. Verse 11 says, So listen to me, people of Judah and Jerusalem. I have decided to strike you with disaster, and I won't change my mind unless you stop sinning and start living right. Will you ask the God, your heavenly potter, who loves you and made you for a wonderful purpose, one much better, by the way, and more beautiful and useful than whatever you and I could ma imagine independently from him. Are you willing to ask him to shape your life? And are you willing to take the places that 
he shows you are being resistant or rebellious and ask him to please help you remove them. Uh, that's what repentance looks like. And this is the Lenten season before Easter. Repentance is uh, the thing we should be doing uh, these days. Let's look at his second point. God's people experience brokenness as a part of his redemptive plan. This is a part of being clay on, on a potter's wheel. Uh, now in the next chapter, chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Please, Lord, answer my prayer. Make my enemies stop accusing me of evil. I tried to help them, but they are paying me back by digging a pit to trap me. Uh, Jeremiah is God's faithful witness. He's a faithful prophet. Uh, there are many faithful Christians today who are suffering abuse and persecution. People are uh, publicly attacking them. And Jeremiah was encountering a new kind of persecution. In the past, he had experienced peer pressure, uh, family abandonment, friends uh, deserting him. Uh, maybe you've experienced those things, but now he's experiencing official government persecution. That's the worst kind in the world. That's what's happening in North Korea and Sudan and, and some of the places in the world where persecution is the most severe. Jeremiah looked to other preachers and prophets and religious leaders for support. And, and Bible-believing, uh, God-loving Christians today are looking to other uh, Christians for support. But now, uh, in Jeremiah's time, those were the people who were now turning against him and officially using uh, the government to punish him. Uh, his most bitter prayer to God for justice uh, is in this passage. You and I need to understand that God sometimes allows his servants to be broken for his divine purpose. Uh, we're in the Easter season, and, and that's the message of Easter. Uh, it was the pleasure of the Father, Isaiah said, to crush Christ so that he could be the sacrifice for our sins and the reason for our salvation. So Jeremiah, as soon as you have said this, he was to go to the gate of the city and take a, a pot, a clay pot, uh, something valuable and beautiful and expensive. And, and then he was to smash the jar while the people are watching and then tell them what God said. I have also said, I am the Lord all-powerful. And I warn you that I will shatter Judah and Jerusalem just like this jar that is broken beyond repair. Through persecution, the world tries to break the church or the Christian. Uh, through peer pressure and even official opposition, saying you can't get a promotion if you're Christian and believe what the Bible says. Christians need to understand that, that God uh, will, will sometimes allow some persecution for us, but he also will allow judgment for those who try to break his servants. If you've ever gone to a, a third world um, city dump, and, and I've gone to a few of them, there's a, it's an enormous uh, pile of burning, usually garbage, and it, it smells like garbage and death, and, and it's, it's one of the most uh, awful uh, places and one of the awful smells, by the way, that you'll ever experience. Well, well, that's the gate that Jeremiah went to to break this pot. He said, look at this mountain of broken things that, that have been discarded and thrown away. Uh, if you're self-determining, if you decide you will not yield to the sovereign, loving hand of God, this is where that choice will land you. You will be truly ruined and broken like this pot that he shattered in the gateway. I'm going to bring so much trouble to this valley that everyone who hears about it will be shocked, it says in chapter 19, verse 3. Every person, every city, every nation... Uh, needs to listen to this warning. In 2 Corinthians 7.10, it says it again, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. Repentance allows the potter uh, to remove the hardened parts of us, the resistant parts of us, and shape us into something beautiful and useful. And uh, while that process may not be pleasant, it's has a beautiful and, and saving purpose in, in God's plan for us. The purpose of hardship in your life, uh, 2020 and maybe 2021, 
or, or pending disasters to bring us back to God. The sorrow, fear, embarrassment of being broken is an invitation to surrender to the hand of God. Uh, what a loving God we have. What a, what a tremendous creative potter. He has a vision for your life. Uh, that potter, before he puts his hands on, on this lump of clay, which is you and me. You know, it, in Genesis, it says that God uh, created us from, from the earth of, uh, that he had created. And, and so now God wants to recreate and shape us into something very beautiful and useful. Here's his third point. God reforms us in the fire of suffering. Uh, chapter 20 has this theme. Uh, Pashur, uh, the son of Emer, e was a priest and the chief of the temple security. He heard what I had said, and so he hit me, and then he had me arrested and put in chains. Now Jeremiah, God's faithful prophet, saying only what God told him to say, lovingly warning people about uh, the danger that their choices were putting them in. And, and telling them about God's hand and how he would shape and protect them if they would allow him. Uh, Jeremiah has now found himself officially denounced by the government, arrested and imprisoned. Uh, we have uh, pastors in prison in Pakistan, pastors in prison uh, in other parts of the world, uh, communist, socialist countries, uh, in some Islamic countries uh, from extremism. Well, Jeremiah is God's faithful witness. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought God said he was going to protect Jeremiah. Well, he is protecting Jeremiah. He's protecting him from death, and he's protecting his ability to preach the word, and he's taking him like God did the Apostle Paul when he was arrested and put in chains and taken to Rome. Uh, God had a plan that Europe hear the gospel, and this was his way to get his messenger and the message into Caesar's household who were the ones guarding him. Jeremiah rightly predicted that God would judge Pashur, the second in command in the high temple, who struck him and had him imprisoned. Jeremiah said that everything this man did to him, God would eventually allow to happen in, in Pashur's life if he didn't repent, and he didn't. Jeremiah was shaken, and he was broken by the humiliation, the shock of such evil. When was the first time that you experienced someone, a friend maybe, a family member, who turned on you because of your faith? I remember, uh, for me, it was in high school when I really committed my life to Christ. I had people I thought were my, my good friends, and, and when I turned to Christ and, and didn't join, couldn't join in, in the things we were doing uh, before, uh, they completely abandoned me. They lost my number. Uh, in the modern terms, you'd say they unfriended me. I, I remember the first time as a pastor in a community, uh, we had this wonderful uh, uh, Jewish man who came to faith in Christ and, and began to, to grow in his faith and eventually became a church elder and one of our leaders in our local congregation. Uh, I was in the post office and, and heard uh, somebody in there uh, looking very angry in my direction, speaking another language, and it turned out they were condemning me for being someone who shared the gospel with a Jewish man. Jeremiah was approved by God, but his persecutors condemned him and had him arrested and treated him like a criminal. Uh, that's a possibility for us. But Jeremiah uh, tried in the, in the face of this not to preach. He, he said to himself, okay, this is just getting me in more and more trouble. Uh, my friends have turned against me. I look to fellow pastors and preachers for support, and they're condemning me too. Uh, I think I'll just stop talking. I, I'm going to stop uh, being God's messenger. Well, God had a different plan for that. Uh, God wasn't going to let him be silent. Uh, he couldn't stop. He said, I, sometimes I tell myself uh, not to think about you. Uh, Lord, or even mention your name, but your message burns in my heart and bones. I cannot keep silent. Chapter 20, verse 9. Obedience to God's plan for your life is hard, but disobedience is harder. I'm going to say that twice. Obedience to God's plan for your life, submitting to the potter's hand, is hard, but disobedience is harder. 
in Philippians uh, chapter 1, it says this, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but you will be saved. We need to know this and, and be faithful witnesses uh, in our age. In chapter 20, verse 13, uh, Jeremiah got the message. Uh, preaching is, is the way to go, even when people oppose you. He said, I will sing praises to you, Lord. You rescue the oppressed from the wicked. Uh, we need to know that that's true. Well, I want to uh, uh, review for you. Uh, here's, here's our review. We need to know, and our society is given the opposite message. They're telling children in grade school and maybe kindergarten, they can be anything they want and anything they imagine and just, just think in your mind what you think you are and that's what you are. Well, God is sovereign and like a potter over a piece of clay and he chooses your purpose, your life, who you are and who you could be in his wonderful sovereign omniscient. He knows everything about you and created you to do something wonderful and amazing. That should bring you such relief that out of all the millions of possibilities in the world, uh, you can't have to f just figure out for yourself who you should be and who you are. Second, God has permission. He has to have permission to break and remake us, to, to remove from us hardened places, uh, pieces of stone and hardened clay that ruin the pottery, that ruin our lives and threaten to make us useless. God needs permission from you and me. We need to submit to his hand in, in repentance when he says, this is really destroying your life. You need to let me remove it. We need to let him do that. And third, the process of being shaped is often difficult and painful and humbling, but it's worth it. I repeat one more time, the, the idea of, of being shaped by God is often painful and humbling. Obedience is hard, but disobedience is harder. God is going to deliver his faithful servants if we stay faithful. If you allow him to shape your life, uh, you will agree, along with Jeremiah, that God is making something more beautiful than you could have ever imagined. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, making us in your image, that in Christ, those who surrender to him in simple faith, it says in the New Testament, are being shaped day by day into the image of God's beloved, holy Son. I pray, God, that we might submit to that process, that we would understand that you're sovereign, and we're not. That's the confusion of our culture. Uh, we think we're sovereign over our lives, can be anything we want, but you're our sovereign. You uh, are, just took clay, something pretty common, and you're making us into something beautiful. I pray, Lord, that we would understand that and know it uh, and be shaped by your loving hand. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, here's our church address. And by the way, on the bottom of the screen is our new church website. It's under construction. It's uh, very primitive and basic at this point. Uh, it'll be developing. But if you want to check it out, it's www.norwichalliancechurch.com. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening.